Welcome to the Spotlight On series, where we get to sit down and speak to some of the most inspirational market leaders from some of the UK's most exciting brands. We'll learn about their careers, their challenges, and their achievements, all to inspire you to help you grow your careers. Hello and welcome to this episode of Spotlight On series where we're joined by the awesome Steve from Patisserie Valley. Um, Steve, can we kick things off? Can you kind of give us a quick intro to you and your, your current role? Yeah, so um, I'm Digital Director at Patisserie Valley. Um, Patisserie Valley is quite an interesting story really. So the, the business is almost 100 years old um, and it was probably, I'm going to say in its heyday, you know, perhaps 10, 20 years ago. Um, there was a there was a lot of stores at that point. Um, there, you know, there was I think there was over a hundred stores. Obviously, that was that was long before I joined. But I think it was all a bit of a house of cards at that point. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I don't know whether it, you know anyone w particularly remembers this, but there, there ended up being a, a big accounting scandal. Kind of brought the company to its knees, to be honest. Um, and at that point, it was I think it went into administration, and it was bought by uh, a private equity company called Causeway Capital. Okay. Um, so they now own it, um, and we, we're really kind of running a bit like a startup nice. now, um, you know. Which some days is absolutely fantastic, and other days, you know, you you want to bang your head against the wall because it's it. You, we are, you know, we're kind of running at a hundred miles an hour at the moment, um, which is you know can, can be very very exciting, but also very demanding as well. And I guess your your role as digital director then within a, a sort of essentially a bricks and mortar type business like what, what does that encompass yeah so I mean being honest I haven't fully progressed into kind of looking at the bricks and mortar um, side of things at the moment so during Covid we launched the direct, consu uh, direct consumer business and it absolutely took off you know as a lot of online businesses did um, during Covid um, but you know it, it's probably fair to say that it, it perhaps in the last year or so reached a little bit of a, a plateau so I, I've been brought in to hopefully take it to the next level nice. Um, but you know that's gradually going to evolve into so you know we're soon going to be launching a loyalty program which is going to encompass the direct to consumer business and the stores um, and that's where my role becomes I'd say a bit, a bit more interesting you know when you're you know you're going from just looking after that e-commerce side of things to also helping um, you know shape what the proposition is in 29 retail stores. Well as I say probably you're going to ban the word around but like Digital transformation is, is. It sounds like it's going to be like a a, a big part of the the overall strategy. Yeah, right? you know, and I, I think there's, uh, I mean, the the stores at the moment are, you know, fairly traditional, but you know, there's lots of stuff that we can do there. You know, with, um, you know, kind of digital tariff boards. But you know, we we've got to be mindful of the. You know, when you say digital tariff board, people think of a you know a great big screen with you know kind of neon writing on it. But you know, you can do that really. Um, tactfully and kind of gracefully, and, and you know, integrate it with a with a heritage brand. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's when it's going to start becoming a bit more exciting. But I think it's fair to say it's a, it's a digital transformation project. So, and I guess then <clears throat> to 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 rewind things back. So obviously, digital director now, big transformation project yeah. going on, amazing high value brand. What, what what's your kind of career path been to to, to date? Yeah, so I mean, it, it's been a, a bit of a, a, a bit kind of all over the place, really. So <laughs> I mean, I, I started my career as a web developer. Okay. Um, so I did, I did six years at an agency. Yeah. Um, Felt like thirty six years, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and you know, working for an agency, as, as I'm sure you guys well know, it's you know, it's one of those it can be hugely rewarding, but can also be you know quite challenging as well. Um, and yeah, so stayed there for six years. But then actually, my uh, my my son was born, and I, I thought I should probably try and be a bit more ambitious in what I'm doing in life. So I started started looking for for some other roles, um, and I actually went to work for one of our clients at the time, um, which uh, was a very imaginatively tied to a business called the Gold Bullion Company. I wonder what they um, sold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we we sold uh, gold and silver bullion online. Yeah. Um, and this was not quite at the height of the financial crisis, but not not long after. Um, gold prices were really high. There was a lot of demand in it, much like there is at the moment, actually. Um, and you know, gold was kind of flying out of the doors, um, and you don't really 
consider that people are purchasing gold bars mm -hmm. and having them delivered through the post, but but they are. Um, you know, th that was th that was a really interesting and at times very exciting role um, because it, it was a commodity. The price was changing by the minute. Um, and, you know, you, you had to sell stuff quickly. Um, so after that, I went to um, an online publisher. Okay. Um, so that was regional business news, which wasn't quite as exciting. Yeah. Um, but that, that was that was kind of a digital transformation project as well. Okay. Um, it was it was an online publisher, but their ways of working were quite old fashioned at the time. I remember when we spoke on the phone as well, you were saying that the business itself was going through quite a big tradition, uh, like sort of transitional period itself yeah. with new owners and stuff like yes. that. That injected a whole load of excitement as well, right? Yeah, um, you know, and a, a very ambitious, very, you know, previously very successful owner took took over the business, um, you know, with big plans to, to modernise it. And, you know, we, we achieved quite a lot there in a short period of time. And that resulted in a management buyout of the, of the business. Um, but then I had the opportunity to go and work for the NEC group. Okay. Um, so everyone thinks of the NEC as the place where they do crofts, crofts. Which, <laughs> which, which it absolutely is. Um, but there's also various other business units um, within the group. So there's like Amadeus, which is a caterer. Um, you know, there's conference centres. But the, the, the part of the business I started in was called the, the Ticket Factory, mm. um, which was a ticket agent. Um, so selling event tickets online. And what, what were the different roles that you had that kind of, so you obviously you've gone from agency in the web development role, yeah. then you went to Gold Bullion. What, what role did you have at the Gold Bullion Company? Uh, so Gold Bullion Company, that was, so started as a, a PHP web developer, then went to be e-commerce manager. Okay. Um, after that, it was head of digital. Yeah, okay. And then when I joined the NEC group, that was as head of marketing. Head of marketing. Um, so you've, you've kind of had like a transition of technical start, moving to something a little bit, yeah. a bit broader, Again, broader, but within digital is the head of digital, and then actually broader still with outside of digital. Yeah, and although although that was you know called head of marketing, and, and there was lots of you know what you'd call traditional marketing within that, it was it was you know primarily at a, an e-commerce business. Yeah. Um, so the, the bread and butter was you know pay per click, SEO, conversion rate optimization, stuff like that. Um, but we also Although it was, although that was a client side role, there was an, an element of agency side as well because mm -hmm. we did ticketing for people like the the LTA, British Athletics, um, the RHS, who do the Chelsea Flower Show, and we would have to tender for that work. So there was things like um, tender writing and pitching, yeah. stuff like that. Everyone loves that, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> it did, did lead to some long uh, long nights and yeah. stressful stressful occasions at times. Um, but, you know that added a whole a whole kind of suite of new skills yeah. as well, and I, I was surrounded by some you know some quite gifted you know brand and comms marketeers as well, um, and you know I learned a huge amount from from them too. So you know that was you know that that was a, a quite a broad role, uh, and and also just a it was a, a great industry and a great company to work for as well. And, and I guess so within our industry, or certainly within like my role, I've, I've seen us work with you know a variety of different in-house positions. So we work with quite a lot of yeah, um, heads of e-commerce, yeah. e-commerce managers. We also work with quite a lot of heads of digital, digital marketing yeah. managers. And you've actually like held both of those positions, which so I, th I think is quite interesting. For those who are exploring career opportunities and perhaps looking at one or the other to start with, like what, yeah. what are the, what in your opinion, what have been the key? differences and what are the right skill sets that lend themselves yeah. to me? Yeah, so after I'd been at the NEC group, I went to Vax, the floor care business, and there I was head of e-commerce. Okay. Um, now, traditionally, I always think of head of digital being a bit more focused on the, the digital marketing, you know, that SEO paperclip type stuff. Um, whereas head of e-commerce, I think of it as being more focused on the day-to-day -day trading, but also probably working with the integrations team to, you know, get, you know, to determine how things are interacting with the warehouse, stuff like that, website stability, website roadmap, stuff like that. So did you, I'm guessing your technical background then played quite a big role in, in it the... It did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in reality, probably all of the roles, you know, the, the three kind of most digital roles I've held, so the head of digital, head of e-com and digital director, they've all been fairly similar. Now, I don't know whether that's because I've made them like that or because it's been a, you know, there, there's been 
you know, not particularly well-defined job descriptions, maybe. Um, but yeah, there's there tends to be a bit of a bit of everything in those roles. But I think if I was being if I was defining it on paper, I'd say head of e-com is probably more trading focused, and head yeah. of digital is more digital marketing focused. But I guess the, the good news is is if people are in one route, then <clears throat> for, from your experience, certainly there's there's opportunity to look outside of a, a, of a job title that they might be sort of potentially thinking that they can only fit in and, and look elsewhere. Yeah, definitely. You know, and a lot of the skills that are required to ensure you get good return on investment from pay-per-click, for instance, are the same skills that are required to make sure you're all over the numbers for the trading of a website. Mm. So I think generally, you know, the head of digital and head of e-com type roles probably, probably require somebody that's quite analytical, quite logical, um, happy to get stuck into the, you know, the, the nitty gritty of the data. Mm. And I guess so. Looking then back at the, the, the maybe the sectors that you've worked in. So yeah. you've been in publishing. Yeah. You've been in e-commerce or retail. Um, you've then gone into sort of like events and hospitality, yeah. electronics. So what what as a marketer specifically, or, or even looking at the, the sort of the e-com side of stuff, what, what are the skill sets that lend itself to that, uh, to being applicable across all industries? Or are there certain skill sets that, you know, serve better in one particular industry over another? I suppose my kind of career path, it's, it's been very kind of data and, and insight driven. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think though probably those those skills are, are, are fairly universal, but you know you could be you know a really great brand marketeer, and those skills are are, are relatively universal as well. So yeah, I, I think the I think a lot of you know although a lot of my roles have been quite similar, they I've kind of jumped from very you know to various different industries. Mm. I'd say that the most important skill is is being adaptable and resilient. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, probably some of those softer skills which are, you know, easy to forget about sometimes, mm. but you know, they're, they're very important for, you know, progressing in your career. And for for you, was that <clears throat> was that something that you focused on early on in your career in terms of personal development or is it, or is it is it something that you've kind of like built and worked on over time? Yeah, I think probably, I mean, you know, I'd say probably for the first five, six years of my career, I was probably completely naive to it, to be <laughs> honest. Um, but, you know, at, at the NEC group, there was, you know, there was a, there was a really big like learning and development team. Um, there was, you know, you, there's more courses to go on than you could shake a stick at. Mm. And I think that's where I started Understanding a bit more about my my style um, and you know how how I worked with others and and stuff like that and you know th- th- there was the new leader course the advanced leader course all, all that sort of stuff um, was, was that that was all at um, NEC was it was it? yeah because that's quite interesting because when we were speaking on the phone like I, like previously you were you spoke really passionately about NEC you said yeah. how much of a great job it was you mm-hmm. said how amazing the environment was yeah. and, and and it sounds like actually as part of that they had this um ability to offer you know personal development through through programs and stuff like that like how important was that to you in your career and perhaps like what eventually led you to perhaps moving on from that for for another opportunity well so I mean, that was I, I think the kind of the D side of it I didn't necessarily realize was and probably not even at the time realized kind of how important that was but you know after the fact you you then think oh, actually that you know what what I did there mm-hmm. Has, has really benefited my my career, but I, I think I mean, probably what made the NEC a, a great place to work is, you know, th- there was there was some really great perks there. You know, I went to loads of gigs. You know, you got free lunch, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but but all of that, it's it's a bit um, superficial, perhaps. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. But you know, what was what what was most important was being surrounded by some some really great people and mm. um, you know people who I'm still friends with to this day um, and actually so I I, I left the NEC group because I, I was actually made re- redundant during Covid yeah um, so which that then led me to onto my role at Vax mm. um, 
and you know that that was a you know that that was a, although it was kind of outside of my control and it was you know because i mean the, the business went from you know 150 million pound revenue um to to zero revenue overnight yeah. um you know the nec halls were converted into a, a hospital yeah, I remember, yeah. um so you know it was a really challenging time for the business and you know kind of re reflecting on that although it wasn't you know there was, there was probably kind of external reasons yeah. um why i got made redundant it feels like a real kick in the teeth yeah, at, at the time um and you know i think that comes back to that point about being resilient and adaptable yeah you, mm. you have to throughout your career you're gonna get kicked and knocked down over and over again and you, you just have to get back up and, and keep going and i guess if you if, if you look at your career obviously since that knock <laughs> You know, it's it's gone on to strive in in you know a lot of amazing brands, and obviously to to position now where you're you're, you know, digital director of, yeah. of a you know flagship sort of high street store brand, which is which is which is awesome. It, it sounds like from what you were saying, you know, for those um, perhaps watching and and uh, assessing you know their next opportunity, it, it sounds like what you're saying is like obviously the uh, an employer that offers learning and development that has the kind of like the culture the perks is all yeah. really important but obviously you've got to tie that with something that you're generally quite interested in and passionate about yeah you know i think the i think businesses are kind of moving away from this these days but the you know the the beer keg in the corner and the ping pong table like who cares hide our people <laughs> 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 um but you know, it's, now if you happen to have those things, fine. But it, it it is that you know making sure there's the really good culture, mm. and, and I think also probably more important than the industry is finding a good mentor. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I wouldn't say I've necessarily had one you know one person who's really kind of guided me in my career, but there's been a number of people who've who, who've made a, an impact on me. You know, some for the better, some also for the worse as well. And and actually, sometimes you learn, you learn kind of the way you don't want to do things yeah. as well. So you know, it's in every bad experience, there's learnings that you can you can take there as well. And how, how have you found those mentors? Is that have they been sort of provided through employment, or actually have you kind of gone out and, and found mm, people that you want? No. To so this is generally just people. Um, you know, line managers or people I've worked alongside, stuff like that. Mm. Um, so, you know, not like an external mentorship program or anything like that. And, uh, you know, although I, I know those exist and are probably very valuable, this is really just finding finding great people to, to work alongside. So when, yeah, I guess when you're um, evaluating the position you're in, if, if you're, you know, relatively junior or working your way through your career, it's, it's, it's making sure that there are people that you can learn from, that you aspire, you know, that generally you, you kind of like aspire to be like, and, and sort of things like that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. that really, really resonates. With and you well. know, I think if you're, if you're not learning, it's time to leave. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, because that that's, I mean, you know, in my opinion, yeah, every day you should be learning something really. Yeah. Um, and you, uh, I never think you want to get too comfortable where you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, because that you know they, then you're not developing as a, as a person and your career's not developing. I guess then to, to to wrap things up, we when we chatted, you, we spoke actually about how people get into marketing and yeah. how you know maybe some of the more traditional routes are uh, you know perhaps not as as appropriate anymore. Yeah. Like what, so what was your experience in terms of getting into marketing and, and where do you think the the you know young people should be potentially looking to get into marketing themselves. Yeah, I mean, so I, um, I, I, I went to university and did computer science, um, kind of because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> and I opened the, uh, the UCAS book and I um, was like, oh, yeah, that look, kind of looks interesting. Um, but I felt like I effectively just bought a piece of paper which got me a job. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like what I learned at university was all that valuable for what I'm doing now. Um, and, you know, that's probably as, you know, mostly my fault for perhaps if I'd gone and done a, a marketing degree, I'd have felt differently. Um, but, you know, there's so many different routes into into business these days. Um, you know, there's 
various, so, you know, I, th I think Impression offer a, um, you know, graduate program or yeah. an apprentice program. Um, that's a really great option for some people. Um, I think that the default is for people to be pushed into university, but there's, you don't have to do that, that route. Um, you know, on the job training is, you know, I, I, in my opinion, far more important than anything you can learn out of a book. Um, I think especially when now when you're balancing the sorts of debt that you, you know you're facing coming Absolutely. out. Don't get me wrong. I, I think what you can learn at university is is incredible. The the life lessons of, of yeah. being self independent, you know, self dependent and things like that is, is is huge. But obviously, when you are faced with the sorts of sums that you that you're talking about, there there are alternatives now, which I think is quite exciting and great great for for the business. Yeah, and of course, you know, the, the one thing perhaps you'd miss by not going to university is that social side of things, which is you know, which, which is hugely important, but, you know, I suppose you, as with all things in life, you have to balance what's what's important to you, don't you? Um, and if you want to go and do three years of drinking, then, you know, absolutely go for it. But it's, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that way. There are other routes into, um, into business as well that you can take. So it's, yeah, each to their own, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm sure there's lots of value in there for, for um, those out there who are watching. So thanks again for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. For more content like this, don't forget to sign up to our newsletter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social.